Hello. Uh, my name is Remy. Um, for those who don't know me, um, I I've been around the community for about two years by now, um, with a lot of um, presence on the Stack Overflow. On Stack Overflow, uh, you may have saw me for, uh, answering somewhere. I spend my days on it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, today we'll talk about boilerplate and more specifically widgets boilerplate. Um, you see, I'm myself pretty lazy, you know, and I think many of us are lazy too. We don't want to, once we do something, we don't want to re uh, rewrite the same thing every time because we managed to do it once. So if we did it once, then we know to do it a second time and a third time and a fourth time. We are keep, uh, keeping re repeating up. Repeating, repeating ourselves many, many times is not good for us and not good for the application too because all these code duplicates um, are harder to maintain. Um, ooh, bytes. Okay. So usually what we say is less code is better. Uh, this can be represented, uh, repre repre represented. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, such graph shows that usually as the project grows bigger, you have a, a more code, obviously, and uh, with more code comes more bugs because obviously you have a uh, much more complex application and we are whole humans and uh, due to that, we can't do things perfectly. Even with, if we do a lot of tests, we, s we will still have problems. So the idea is usually to reduce that, uh, that project size as much as possible to reduce that uh, bug count to the bare minimum. Um, there's, there are many principles based around this, such as, for, for example, dry and kiss. Uh, dry is basically don't repeat yourself. What it means is do never ever copy paste some code. If you, want, if you need to do it, then instead extract, the, extract this, refactor it, and, uh, and use that instead. Um, and KISS is um, you should keep, sim keep things simple, as much simple as possible. Uh, if you don't immediately need something really, really complex, uh, then there's, there might be no point at all to do something really complex. And if you want, if you do it, if you do that complex thing, then it may become on the, on the long term harder to maintain your application due to this. Um, yeah, so how does this apply to Flutter? Well, there's one good thing is widgets are highly composable. What this means is you can write a widget and write a, a library of widgets and compose them together to make some more advanced behavior and you can make widget trees and reuse these widget trees, make even bigger and bigger and bigger widgets. And what's really cool with widgets is that uh, their system based around immutability and reactive, uh, reactive programming makes that uh, everything is very consistent and you, you will rarely have something unexpected. Um, so that's really cool. And it allows to reuse a lot of code bit uh, when we um, basically we can reuse a widget uh, many times. But what about reusing code between widgets? Basically, we you have to write some code to make a widget. But so usually, when you want to implement that logic, there are some patterns that you will reuse between widgets, and you may want to uh, extract that logic and don't copy paste it every time because copy paste is bad. But is it simple? Uh, to test this, we'll do a counter application because we are in Flutter, so counter replication. Uh, but there is a twist. Instead of just one counter, we have two counters and a total with a small animation, which makes things a bit funnier. Um, okay, so let's see the code. It's here. I won't go into every single detail of the implementation of 
the counter. We'll just show that um, we basically have everything duplicated. We have to create two animation controller. We have to update the duration two times, dispose it two times. Same goes for the incrementing, uh, incrementing logic. We have to rewrite it twice. And there's a lot of duplicate. There's some slight difference, like for example here we increment by 200 instead of 100 for the other one. But um, due to how widgets are implemented, um, because how, for example, for example, how animation controllers I update are updated based on life cycles of the widget, due to this, we can't extract that logic on something reusable, because since it's tightly coupled, uh, tightly uh, coupled with the life cycles, it's tightly coupled with the class that use it. So if you write a different class, then you can't import that logic. Um, so it's pretty bad. So the answer is bad. No. So what can we do? Uh, well, as I said, the logic is too tight to the widget, and there is some one some <coughs> one possibility that we may explore is mixins. Um, mixins are basically smaller parts of a class that we can be reused between classes. But uh, it can be used to partially solve this issue, but there is still one problem. Uh, mixins can have conflicts between each other. For example, if you use two mixins which declares a variable, and uh, the variables they declare use the same name, then they can modify both, they can both modify the same variable, and the behavior may be totally unexpected. Uh, so basically, uh, React team, which faced the same issue about reusing logic between components, uh, tried mixings too, and they, at some point they said, um, no, we, d we won't use mixings anymore because the problems they, they, they solve makes, uh, the problems they create makes makes things even worse than before. So no, don't, re don't use mixings. Um, but since we're talking about React, uh, there is something interesting is that a few months ago, something like two months ago, React announced a solution to this problem, which doesn't use mixins and is as many, many advantages. So what if we imported that solution to Flutter? And yeah, what, we, what I'm gonna talk about here is me um, making on my own a port of this logic to Flutter. It works, obviously. Um, so yeah, to summarize, to summarize a bit the problem um, about re reusing uh, logic between widgets, uh, React, React said that the, the problem is divided in three main categories. Um, there is the first one, which is wrapper hell. Wrapper, wrapper hell. Basically, it means that uh, if we want to reuse more logic between between, com between widgets, we have to nest widgets uh, between widgets, and it makes a huge widget tree. And for example, in the default application of of Flutter, when you create an application, you have something like 150 widgets, which is a lot. And that's just because at every time you have to nest widget again and again and again and again. And yeah, it's not very ideal. But then if we are trying to nest widgets less, then we have to write more code inside the widget itself. And the, the widget becomes really big. And so there is a lot of duplicate, which is obviously not ideal either. Another aspect they said is that um, it uses classes to, uh, in, React, in React they have the ability to write uh, components as functions, uh, which Flutter can't right now, which is pretty sad. Um, but the thing is functions versus classes requires uh, far less code than, f the f functions requires far less code than classes. Uh, some things like a function can be implemented in like four to five lines for uh, 
a very simple text or something like that, while a class will require something like 10, 20 lines, which is pretty bad. So, yeah. So let's try a demo. Um, basically, what we will try to do is we will re-implement using hooks the counter application we saw earlier. For now, we have a small hello world application. Uh, here, we have we have just uh, one function. This function is used inside the build method of another widget in another file. Uh, to make things more readable, I extracted that widget somewhere else because then it's just add some noise on the screen. But, but yeah, basically that's the build method of the widget which is present on the screen. So for example, if I change to hello world to hello London, then yeah, hello London, wow. Okay, okay, done. <laughs> no, um, obviously, we won't stop here. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first thing we want to do is make a bit of layout. Uh, for this thing, uh, I made a re reusable widget which does nothing but layout which is named counter visual. Yeah. It takes the current, con the current value as a counter and an unpressed method. For now, it will be a null. Yeah. So, oh, wow. I can show you the implementation to show that I didn't cheat. Um, it's basically it's just a row, some text, and some padding. Yeah, nothing special. Uh, so, of course, if we change the value, we don't have that nice animation we saw earlier. Okay. So, the first thing we are going to try to do is um, try to make a counter. We, don't, we won't go with the animation first, we will just go something like increment. Mm. So, first of all, we need some variables, some, some, a counter variable. But we can't, as we said earlier, we can't define a, a variable inside a class because then we will have to copy paste the logic every time and we can't make, in make it into a mixing either so we can't really define it in inside the class itself so it has to be somewhere else and we don't have many choices for this somewhere else so for now I'll, ju I'll just write a, a, a counter variable with uh, we don't know yeah mm. we will see it later um, now we have a, f a counter variable. We can print it here. We'll say counter dot value, and we will increment that value when the button is pressed. So counter dot value plus press one hundred. Okay. So that's basically should be the desired implementation for our for our incrementation, for our counter. But what do we do here? Um, what we usually want to do here is <laughs> tell Flutter to give us some state that we can reuse. So we can, for example, say, okay, use state. And we will give it a default value of zero, because zero, yeah. And let's try this. and we click on the button, and it works. Interesting. <laughs> so what does it do? Um, is this dark magic? No. Uh, why does the counter doesn't get reset every time? There's something somewhere which must tell Frutter to store that variable. Um, basically, this is all thanks to use state. Use state is what we call a hook. This is a new pattern introduced by React uh, two months ago, which is very similar to mixins in the principle, but they are entirely independent from each other. So a hook will have access to all the widget life cycles, and it can define some variables too, but we can use one hook multiple times, and they won't conflict, conflict with, uh, with each other. So for example, I can just state twice and say, okay, this one is counter two, and we will just uh, 
duplicate our line here and change it to use the new variable. Okay. And now we have two counters on the, on the application. But the interesting, the interesting thing is that their value is different. You see, the, the, they have different state. And we even managed to add the second variable without losing the state of the first one. As, we, as, you, as you saw, we had the hot reload working too. So that's pretty cool. OK, by the way, uh, the, impl the implementation should be 200. So that's for our counter. Um, now we will want to make an animation. Uh, what, we, what we could say is, OK, I won't use the counter directly. Uh, I will use uh, an animated value. So typically, it will be an, anima an animation of hint. So we will have some animation, an animated counter. Yeah, uh, again, whatever. And uh, then we will take that animated counter and use an animated builder to print it. Animated builder. Builder. Basic stuff. Am I missing something? No. OK. Animation and animated con animated counter. Animated counter. Okay, and now we wait, we need to use that value. So instead of um, the, the instead of using counter the value, we use animated counter. <coughs> counter dot value. So what we can do here? Um, We'll use a custom hook, a hook which um, defines some custom behavior. We, it's not just a use state. It will do something m deeper than that. Um, I already made one for you, which I will go into it later. Uh, basically, it can, its name is animated hint. It takes the counter and nothing else and as an an duration. Yeah, duration. Duration. And it will automatically twin between the previous value and the new value when the value change. So for example, if I do this and I press save, and I click plus. Oh, animation. And the interesting part is that uh, the implementation of our animation is nothing else but a function, which means that uh, it's not tied to the widget at all. We could very easily take that function, put it into a package, and publish it to pub. And then many, uh, uh, many applications can download it and use it, and use it themselves. It's pretty powerful. Um, and again, we can use it twice. So for this second one, I'll just copy paste it. Do, 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 do. Make it counter. Two. Two. And two. Okay. Plus 200. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice catch. Wow. <laughs> okay. And again, they do different things. Um, and the interesting thing is that, again, we have hot, hot reload too. So for example, if I, if I change the duration of the animation in live, I can say, now it's two times the previous time. And now it takes two seconds. I can say, OK, it's, it's uh, five. And now it's really, really slow. And it's. Uh, uh, it's something that we currently can't easily do in Flutter because uh, the, anim the duration is linked to the init state of a widget. The problem is with that is that init state is run only when the widget is created. But 
since it runs only when the widget is created, when you change it in a, during a hot reload uh, and you want to do a hot reload, then that, that logic won't be, won't be called again. So the duration won't be updated. But since hooks are all inside the build method of the widget, then every time you change the sources, then they will be called again. And the hook will know that the duration changed, and it will say, OK, let's just update the duration. So now we have a nice hot reload on the duration. Mm, okay. And now we have we need to do our total count. So the total count, um, as we saw earlier, uh, there is the proper hell issue we which we talk about. <coughs> to make that total ammunition on the on the previous. Uh, on the previous stateful components, we had to make one animated builder inside the other animated builder just to listen to both animations. And it's pretty bad. I mean, look at this, you can't read it. Um, so I don't like that. Let's just make something easier. For example, you can use a hook builder. A hook builder is uh, like a builder widget or like a stateful builder, whatever. But uh, it has the particularity that it can use hooks, as its name implies. Which means that when the hooks asks for, for a rebuild, the hook with builder will call the builder method again. So context, OK. And here we will return uh, a text with total and our anim animations. OK. Do, do. Animation plus. OK. But how do we listen to the animations? Oh. And we can use, again, another hook. For example, use, use an animation. And it will take an animation. So for example, use animated counter. We can do the same for the second animation. Oh, <laughs> that's not what I expected. That's much better. Okay. Okay, and okay. So now we didn't need to. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So we solved the the nesting issue. But there's one interesting thing is that we could, for example, do that here too. And we can just remove the animated builder. Yeah, not very funny. OK, uh, and just put the text. Something somewhere. OK. And it still works. And there is a slight difference bet between this and the previous code. Uh, the difference is that now we rebuild the row, uh, the column too. But um, the difference is quite big here because we basically uh, divided the line of code by two, and it's very, it's much more readable than having animated builders everywhere. So I tend to prefer this instead of having animated builders having builders everywhere. But you can use both. You can do whatever you prefer. OK. Um, OK. So that's it for the demo for now. Uh, so how does this work? Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, there are some conventions to make hooks. Hooks by design should all, start, uh, should all start with the name use. So it's use, whatever. And hooks must, must always be called at the top level of a, of a function. You must never wrap a hook in, inside a for loop on, or, or a if or whatever. That is because hooks uh, internally are obtained by their index. Basically, when you, for example, here, 
when you do this. Uh, in uh, in Dara, it will store a list of the different values. And whenever you build the widget, it will start from the index 0. And when you call a hook, then it, 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 it will increment that index and then give you the next value. So if we made something like inside a if, then uh, the index will be lost, which won't work. It will break. It will break everything. So no, don't don't make conditions. It can seems a, a bit a, a bit we, a bit we, um, It's a bit weird when you start it, but as you as you saw earlier, it brings a lot of advantages before uh, um, when compared to the previous syntax of widgets. We basically when we compare this to the previous implementation, this one had 100 lines when this one does basically 20 lines, 28. That's quite a lot of boilerplate reduced. Yeah. Um, okay, going further. Yeah, uh, oh, I forgot something. You may want to see where counter is called. Um, counter, counter, go base. Okay, it's here. What's uh, how how this works is that um, it re it introduces a new type of widget. We now can define instead of having a stateless widget or a stateful widget, we can define a hook widget. And that ho that hook widget basically looks like a stateless widget uh, in that it has only a build method and nothing else. But now you can use uh, hooks as usual. You can do use state here and it will work. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, but now there is an interesting question. That is, um, we managed to make the world demo without, uh, uh, without ever looking at the class implementation. And we managed to make some really complex UI without a class at all. So. Why do we keep making class? Because a function seems to be enough to make our UI. Um, well, Flutter by default doesn't really work with functions because you have to create an element and everything and all of that is done by the class and functions can do that. And there's a lot of other problems with functions too. Uh, but um, what if we could solve these problems and use functions to use functions combined with a code generator to generate a class from the function and then use that class. Basically, we would have both, both worlds like a, a small function and hold the power of the class. And that's what I did too. I made a code generator, which is named functional widget, which is available on pub. And you decorate your function uh, fr with a small decorator. Here it's a hash. Uh, H widget for hook widget, and it will generate the previous class we saw earlier. So it looks like something, something pretty, much pretty similar to this. It will use the function you defined earlier, so that you still have breakpoints and everything. It will also generate some cool stuff like um, an integration with the IDE. For example, you know when you inspect a widget you have the, all the fields defined which are visible on the inspector. And the, this, gener this generator will override the default behavior to include all the parameters you passed to it. So you don't have to write that too. So yeah, I think that's it. Any questions? Um, is it possible to pass an ID to the hook so that you can keep track of it and make sure you don't lose it and not rely on the order in which you've defined them? Um, you mean like a map instead of a list? Yeah, I guess so, yeah, or, ju or just give um, an ID. The problem with that is that you're basically reintroducing the naming conflict. So if we extract the hook logic into something reusable 
and internally, internally it uses some IDs, then you may define, use the same ID multiple times, so it will have some clashes. So we can't really do that. Is it possible for you to show us the different use methods that you have set up? Mm, yeah, sure. Um, the most common one are, um, let's go here. The basic one is obviously use state to define a variable. Then we have use memoized, which take a callback. Oh. And it runs that callbacks. By default, it runs it, it run only once, like, like an in state. And it returns this value. So for example, final root egal, like that. Basically, it will call the callback once and always re return 42 for the next calls. This can be useful, for example, if you want to create some very complex class, like a block, for example. You don't want to reinstantiate your block every time you rebuild, so you can store it inside a use memoized. And it can be combined with another hook, which is use effect. Use effect is, uh, like its name, apply to trigger side effects. Um, so we, uh, by default, it's called every time the build method is called, unless you specify some, some arguments, for example, 42, and, or foo, yeah, bigger. And then if you specify this second arguments, it will call the method only whenever something changes inside that list. So for example, if foo never change, then the use effect is called only once. And the thing is, use effect uh, optionally can return something, which, uh, for example, you can do. Uh, it returns the function, and that function will be called when you want to dispose the widget. So, for example, we can use use effect here to say to give the framework uh, how to dispose a block, and then whenever the block change or whenever the widget is, dispo is disposed, then it will dispose the previous block. So yeah, you don't have to write a dispose method now anymore. Uh, we also have um, use value changed, which is typically used uh, l when you want to, you know that if inside a did update widget to compare the previous value with the new value, and if they are different, you want to do something, then basically it does that. So if the counter is different from the previous counter, then it will call a callback. Uh, the parameters are basically the previous value, previous value, and the previous result of the callback. So previous result. And it returns the returns of uh, the the result of this callback. Uh, yes, this can be very useful. For example, when you want to twin between variables. For example, the way I implemented an, uh, use animated hint is that it do a use but it changed on the counter, and so that whenever whenever the value change, it takes the previous the previous value. And it starts the animation, and it twins between the previous value and the new the new value, which make automatically that animation. We can also see here the uh, our use animation controller, which is so a shorthand for use memoize on the animation controller and the use effect and everything. So it takes it creates an animation controller and it will take care of updating the duration when the duration change. It will also take care of disposing the animation controller when you dispose the animation controller. And uh, the a final one which we can use with block two is use stream. It takes a stream and it returns the latest value. So basically, you don't have to use the uh, stream builder anymore. And yeah, that's a bit of the list of the books I implemented. Any further questions? Anybody? Um, 
Thanks. This uh, this looks like a really really interesting library. I've kind of come from React, React Native, and Native Mobile world, so I'm pretty new to Flutter. Um, a couple of questions on the the kind of functional stuff is: Does Dart do like a kind of a build time code generation, or is it kind of thing you script? Uh, um, yeah, it's almost built in. Um, it's not in included in Dart SDK, but it's a package developed by the Dart team itself, which is called Build and Source Gen. And uh, basically, this package allows you to write a code generator. It will parse this, uh, the Dart files, and you can do some custom stuff. And yeah. Cool. And on the functional stuff, is that going to be something you see as that could be a first class way of doing this kind of thing? Or is it something that's not going to quite work within the Flutter ecosystem or libraries? Like, it c c uh, can it work well? Is it, or, sorry, the, um, I, I, I guess the, the hooks, the stuff in React, it's sort of a very first class, it'll probably be the standard way of doing things in six months to a year and in React. Is that something that we can hope for from your library? I still don't understand the question. If if if, if everything goes well, uh, will lots of the people in this room be using the functional approach to uh, hooks from mm -hmm. your library? Would th would that be conceivable? Or well, yeah, but what do I have to say? <laughs> <Yeah>. No, <laughs> you, like uh, you, you hope so. Yes, like uh, I don't know. It's just because I I guess when I look at Flutter, it, a lot of it seems very fundamentally object oriented and. I wonder, you know, how viable is a yeah. sort of more functional approach to doing things because that's the kind of approach I guess I like using. Mm. Well, the thing is, Flutter can't really support functions right now, due to how the language is built. Uh, it's not JavaScript, and we don't have mirroring either. So, working with functions and creating elements based on the prototypes of, of the functions can be very difficult. So, they don't really have the choice of using classes. We don't. We are almost forced to use a code generator for this. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody? All right. Thank you very much. Oh, Florian's got one uh, quick message as well for us. Should I get a browser tab? A browser tab. Mm-hmm.